Welcome to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. Triple A, you and I have been talking about required minimum distributions and the fact that there is a 25% penalty if retirees do not calculate and take the required minimum distributions properly. That's right, Daniel, but there's even a more dramatic and common consequence that puts one's retirement at risk. And that's what we should talk about on today's show. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today, we're talking about how to plan for required minimum distributions, or RMDs. And AAA, this is something you've been helping people with for many, many years and it's it's something that everyone who has retirement savings is going to have to deal with at some point in time, right? And exactly. we get questions about this all the time. What are those things? RMWs, RDWs, <laughs> right? Those RM things. MRDs, what are those things I yeah. <laughs> have, to, have to take when I turn, I think it's 70. So it's confusing <laughs> because people don't know exactly what it's called, what it is. They know they have to do it, but then it's confusing because the ages keep changing, right. right? Yeah. And I get all the time, people will say, I think at 70, I have to take some money. And I'm like, well, no, it's changed. So we're going to we're gonna talk today, right, about what these things are, yeah. why you have to take them, how to save yourself from IRS penalties, yeah. how to incorporate these with your other retirement savings, and then how to hopefully protect yourself, right? People yeah. pay attention from one of these most common mistakes that we've seen retirees make over and over again. Exactly. Yeah. And you know the the one of the big deals about this is, you know, I think what we should do when looking at this is excuse me, go back and look at a little bit of of history of retirement plans in the United States. And back in 1994, you know, prior to 1994 it was pretty solid, you know, people would go to work and they'd get a pension. And, you know, maybe they get Social Security and a pension, that kind of thing. When 1974, Congress passed the ERISA, Employee, Employee Retirement Income Security Act. And so government thought that they were doing a great thing. But in actuality, what happened was companies started using this to get rid of their pension plans and put and, and take the, the onus off of the company, off the employer, and put it on the employee by having them be their own, you know, that they have to save for their own retirement kind of thing. And, you know, it's taken a lot of years. And, you know, today, more than ever, there's fewer and fewer companies that offer pensions anymore. We have clients who are retiring now, baby boomers who are retiring with pensions still from some companies. But, you know, most of their children, you know, are entering the same companies and, and don't have pensions um, associated only 401k plans, which was a result of the ERISA uh, Act passed in 1974. And that's where, you know, I remember being being a teenager back then and and seeing the, the bank with putting up signs for, you know, start an IRA for $2,000 and, and, you know, take it off your taxes and you won't have to worry about paying the taxes on it till, till the future. And, you know, that's what they started with, with the idea of don't pay the tax now, we'll put it off and pay it later. And always the thought was, oh, when you pay it later when you're when you're in a lower tax bracket. Well, you know, they lied, right? Because most people in retirement, what we're finding is people are either in the same tax bracket or higher tax bracket. And, you know, you end up paying tax on the on the crop rather than just the seed now, so to speak, it, with with these plans. And, you know, when it when you know when this was placed, when this was put into effect, you know, it it created you know, tax deductibility for your contributions and you're able to, to defer to taxes and able to do tax payroll reduction and, and exemptions, you know, from creditors from that standpoint. So don't have to worry about creditors being a, being an issue, but uh, you know, it, 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 it took it the onus off the employee, the employer and put it on the employee was the big thing. Now people have to make sure so, they save. So a pension, just to clarify, pensions, were things that companies offered their employees mm -hmm. as kind of to, to help them with the retirement. So the the pension, the company took on the investment risk. They hired mm -hmm. institutional money managers instead of having an individual manage the money. 
And then they took on all the market risk and they took on the risk. So instead of just saying, I'm going to have X amount of money at retirement, you said, I'm going to have a paycheck, $60,000 a year for the rest of my life at retirement. And your company took on all the risk. Right. You're saying that changed. And mm -hmm. so now the company says, Daniel or Andrew, here is your retirement plan. You can contribute. You don't have to contribute. If right. you contribute, we may or may not match you a certain amount. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how much you're going to have in retirement and you have to pick your investments. Right. But we're going to limit you to what investments you pick to this certain universe that we deem fit. Right. So it, now they don't have any requirements as far as making sure you have a guaranteed income and you take on if markets don't do well, your account doesn't do well. If your money was invested poorly, then you suffer all that. Bad. So it really put that onus on the individual instead exactly. of the institution like it used to be. Exactly. You're exactly right. And you know, I wanted to let you know, if you just joined us, you're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew Daniel Ajme. Today's topic is how to plan for RMDs because people don't know what people don't know. And so we want to be able to educate you, help you to be able to understand in insights that you may not get in other places. And so stay with us and see. We have a paper that we'd like to educate you with or give you so that you can read up on some of this stuff. It's called the Secure Act 2.0. And the SECURE Act, we're going to be getting to in today's show a little bit from that, but the SECURE Act affected required minimum distributions in the various ways, changing the age and, and various things. So you want to, you know, this, this report, it's only about a three-page report, we'll be glad to get it to you for free and we'll educate you a little bit on that and how that may, how that affects you. You can have that by calling 800-725-725. 7616 for your free, no obligation copy of Secure Act 2.0. Ask for it by name. You're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew Daniel, Daniel Ajme because people don't know what people don't know. Today's topic, how to plan for RMDs. Daniel, you know, when you're talking about that, when it went from the risk, went from the employer to the employee, that's when prior to that, people didn't know anything about investing for the most part, generally speaking, the general public, right? They didn't have to. Sure, there were people that knew about, they, they invested stuff, but it was at that point that people started when they we got 401k. Now they can start looking at how to invest money. And, you know, in the later 70s and in the 80s, the stock market started, you know, taking off because more people than ever were putting more money into the market. And the market is a supply and demand thing. So the more people putting in makes the market go up. And so today you got a lot of people that know a lot more about investing than they did back then, but there's still a lot of people that don't. And, and you know, the, the, the terrible thing is that those people that don't even know what they don't know about investing, you know, or they, they know enough to make them, to make themselves dangerous from that standpoint. But, and that, and that kind of goes along with that what we talked about at the at the top of the show when we said there's a consequence, it's dramatic consequence, a common mistake that people make that 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 you know keeps them that's that's even worse that can ruin their retirement. And we're going to get to that later on in the show. But this is the idea, and so the the government wanted to you know came up with you know when you put this money away, and we're not going to pay the, you're not going to pay the taxes now, but you're going to have to pay the taxes when you're in retirement and originally it was 70 and a half and now it's 73 years old and in within the next 10 years or so it's going to be bumped up to 75 years old before you have to start taking your required minimum distribution but if you don't take your required minimum distribution properly there's a huge penalty a 25 percent penalty so you're going to pay, you're going to have to take your, if you don't take it properly, you're still going to have to take it and then pay 25%, you know, extra tax on top of the tax you're paying anyway. And so you want to make sure that your required minimum distributions are handled properly. And so, you know, you may not want to try this at home, but you want to make sure that it, that it's done. And that's what we're talking about today. So, you know, with that, the, the government, you know, that's a, a brief history of of what's going on it's time to pay the piper when you reach a certain age and you're paying tax on a larger amount of money and daniel am i missing anything from that front no i think i think just what types of accounts do people have to take money out of 
Mm-hmm. So we, we know that we switched from pensions, mm-hmm. where it went from a defined benefit, you know what you were going to receive, to yeah. defined contribution, you know what's going to be put into your account. Yeah. And you know some of the firewalls that may have to do with these different types of accounts that people need to be aware of as well. Okay. Yeah, that's a great, good point. Thank you for bringing that up. And and you know what we're so so what we're talking about. We're talking about plans. You know, where you have to take money out. Required minimum distribution has to come out for on any money that's pre-tax, like the money that you put in your four hundred one k plans, four fifty seven plans, TSA, four hundred three b plans. You know, all the thrift savings plans, anything that's pre-tax, IRAs, pre-tax money that when today, if you're 73 years old, you're going to have to take out a minimum amount. Don't have to take the whole thing out. Minimum amount, the amount is roughly 4% when you're 73 that you have to take out. You can take out more, but that you, you minimum that you have to take out is approximately 4%. Then the percentage increases every year that you get older. Whether or not the dollar so, amount increases is dependent upon how much money's in your plan, but the percentage increases. What were you going to say? So Daniel? if you have a if you have a 403B, you've got five hundred thousand dollars in it, then the first year it's going to be right around twenty thousand dollars that you need exactly. to take out. If you only take 10, then you might be getting a, a letter from the IRS or other things. If you take 30 you're okay. So you could take more, but you need to be making sure you are taking whatever that minimum amount is and um, doing that each year because the amount changes each year. Exactly. Making sure you're on top of that. Exactly. That's kind of the idea. Well, I see that it's time for us to take a break. And before we do, I want to offer you the, the book that we're offering this week. It's called Smart Retirement by Matt Segula. Now, Smart Retirement doesn't deal with required minimum distributions, but what it deals with is lowering. If you put money, if you go this route of the smart retirement route, you'll be able to have a lower required minimum distribution, which if you don't need the money, that's a good thing to have a lower one. Or if you don't need the money from your required minimum distribution, you can then, what do you do with it? How do you reinvest it? Well, you can put it into a smart retirement plan. We'd love to be able to give you this book, easy read book, only about a hundred pages. Ask for it by name, Smart Retirement by calling 800 725 Seven six one six eight hundred seven two five seven six one six to get your free copy to the next five callers eight hundred seven two five seven six one six call now. You're locked on to financial strategy with Andrew and Daniel Andrewby. So when Jamie came in for a, a free second opinion, I was looking at his accounts and I said, Jamie, hey, you know, you've got money in your four hundred one k plan that has. That's that's getting three percent on it. So you know the good news is it's making three percent, but bad news is making only three percent. But then you have all this other money in your IRAs, more than that, like three times as much that's in your IRAs that's at risk in the market. And and this presents a red flag to me, Jamie, because you know if the market goes down and you have to take out your required minimum distributions, you're going to be cannibalizing your assets. And he said, "Oh no, not to worry, Andrew. You know that's why I have that money in the three percent account because I'm going to take my required minimum distribution out of there, and so I won't have an issue, and I can let the money ride in the stock market." And I said, "Well, that's a great thought. The problem is it's illegal. the The IRS won't allow that." I'm Andrew Adjami, and I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today, we're talking about how to plan for RMDs or required minimum distributions. And AAA, that sounds like uh, a well thought out plan. Unfortunately, the <laughs> IRS doesn't allow for that, right? Because there's yeah. firewalls in between different types of accounts. Exactly. On the right track, but there's some, there's some <laughs> RMDs are not difficult. They're not difficult, but you just have to know the ins and outs to make sure that you're not committing one of these little tiny errors that gets those IRS agents upset with you, right? <laughs> right, right. And, you, you know, this is, this is, you know, it's an honest mistake. You know, the, the guy, Jamie was sincere, but he was sincerely wrong, right? <laughs> and. And so the problem that comes in, there's a firewall between employer plans 
and your own IRAs. So, you know, get it in, in this concept, right? We have plans that are owned, a 401k, a 403b, a TSA, a thrift plan. They're all owned by the employer. You own the money, but the employer owns the plan. So the employer is the one that ha- says what to do and whatnot. And because the employer owns the plan, you the employer, you have to take your RMD out of that plan. Any money that you have in that plan, you have to take out. And this is one reason why people love rolling their money out of 401k plans and such, out of their employer plans, into their own individual retirement accounts or arrangements, because it gives them not only the universe of options to make sure they don't run out of money, but it gives them flexibility to be able to determine where they want to take their for, their required minimum distribution from. But if you have, you know, so if you have a million dollars and you have $300,000 in a 401k, so so if you have a million dollars, you're 73 years old, your, your RMD is approximately $40,000. You have to take you have a you have um, three hundred thousand dollars in a four hundred one k old four hundred one k. You have two hundred thousand dollars in a four hundred three b, and you have five hundred thousand dollars mixed up in uh, various IRAs. Well, you're going to have to take in, in that example the minimum amount of checks that you will have to take. Or, you know, are three, one check from the four hundred one k. One, you know, and I think I said the four hundred one k was worth three hundred thousand, so that check would be about twelve thousand. One check from the four hundred three b, I think that's, I said that was two hundred thousand, so that check would be about eight thousand. And then a check, you know, you can from the IRAs, you can take it all from one IRA or pieces from each or whatever. But if you took it all from one, you need you need a check for twenty thousand dollars from one IRA, and the other IRAs could could be left alone. So that firewall prevents it because the the employer owns those four one the four hundred one k the four hundred three b whatever it is as opposed to you owning your individual retirement arrangement. So mm. that's a huge thing to to know because and that's again if you don't take it properly you can get this penalty. Yeah, so you could do it that way. Another option people like to do for planning for their retirements and we're planning for the requirement of distributions is put it into an IRA because then you can have four different IRAs say and just take it out of the one you desired. So then yeah. Jamie's plan works because you could have one in a fixed account, mm-hmm. take it from there. The other way you could do it now is you could just generate enough income, right? Because it's it's always funny to me when people will say, investing in the S&P is the best way to do it. And so I put all my money in the S and P, and then I keep two hundred thousand dollars on the sideline, so I can take RMDs or have living expenses cash, for a right? couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And then we look at the market returns for the last twenty years or twenty two years, and it's something like seven percent. And then we say, well, if you had two hundred of your million in cash, so you could live for a couple of years, well, now you're not getting seven percent, and you could just collect 7% on all the money and income and cover your expenses every single year because that would be, what, $70,000 $70, a year, right? Just right. an income. So it's it's yeah. easily cover your RMD, have some left over if you don't need it to reinvest and grow the portfolio organically. But there's a lot of things when, when we're talking about how to plan. Hopefully, we'll get into some of these concepts of how to plan. Right. And then as the RMDs go, increase the age, it gives people more time to make more money tax-free. And hopefully yeah. we can get into that a little bit too as we go through here. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, if you've just uh, picked up listening to us, you listen to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami because people don't know what people don't know. And today's topic is how to plan for RMDs. And we want you to plan for your RMD. Even if you're younger, if you're, you know, you're 60 years old, it, it's a great time to be thinking ahead because it's there's you can make changes to your portfolio to be able to help you be able to be in better shape at that time, even though you might be 10 years or more away. But nevertheless, we have a, a paper we'd love to put in your hand to educate you further called the Secure Act 2.0. The Secure Act 2.0 was passed on December of 2022, and it made some changes to required minimum distributions. One of them is it took the age from, tw- from 72 to 73 years old for this year. And then is taking the age to 75 years old by the year 2033. So 
there's some other things that you'd like to learn from that to be able to help you. And you can have that for free by calling us at 800-725-7616, 800-725-7616. If you have a question or comment as well, please, you can call that in at that same number to be able to give us so that we can even answer that question on the air if you'd like us to it. 800-725-7616. Daniel, you know, taking that, the RMDs is, and taking it the right way is so important. But one of the things that happens is, and I'm sure people in the audience is wondering, how is this going to affect my taxes? When I have to take this required minimum distribution out, how is this going to affect my taxes? And that's a thing to that we should get into. You know, one of the things, you know, we talked about the amount of the RMD, the percentage of the RMD increases every year with your age because the government has these life expectancy tables that they use for how much you have to take out. Well, how much you have to take out then comes in as ordinary, regular income and is all taxable. So in our example that we've been using of a million dollars and you have a RMD today of $40,000, well, all things being equal in 10 years or so, if you're set at 83, it could be it could be pushing $60,000 that you have to take out or in that vicinity as opposed to $40,000. But you have that forty thousand dollars comes in, and and if if you know your household has a hundred thousand dollars of taxable income now, and you have another forty thousand dollars come in because you're seventy three, well now you have one hundred forty thousand dollars of taxable income, which you know potentially that's putting you somewhere in the twenty two to twenty four percent tax bracket currently. You know, in a couple of years that's going to go up to to twenty five and twenty eight percent tax bracket. But you know, so from that angle. You know, just for federal, not taking into consideration state taxes, but just for federal taxes, you know, you're talking about another nine thousand dollars or so, roughly eight to nine thousand dollars of of taxes. So out of that forty thousand dollars you have to take out, you only get to put in your pocket thirty thousand or less, because depending what your state tax is. This is a big deal. While why it's important to start looking at this stuff sooner than later, because you may not be thinking about your pension, or you may not be thinking about your social security, or you may not be talking about other types of unearned income you may be getting that you can't just say, well, I won't take that anymore because I'm going to be taking my RMD. And and so it can be very expensive to take these RMDs if you're in a good spot where you have a lot of income. If you were already drawing from your, if you only have that retirement account and that's the only income you have which most people are all going to have social security is it in addition to that but then it might not be a big as big of a deal right to just draw that extra 40 but if you have other sources of income this could really hurt you tax wise or at least cost you a lot to get that money tax wise right right exactly and that's a very good point then you you know some people need the money and they're already receiving forty thousand dollars out of their out of their accounts. So they're they've already achieved their required minimum distribution. There's nothing they have to worry about. You know, we have clients like that that are getting that getting that money, and they say, "What about my RMD, Andrew?" And so you don't have to worry about it. We're already got that covered, right? But the you know in this example, we're talking about people that that don't need that money, and they're having to start taking it. But even for people that do need the money, it's important that the money is allocated properly to make sure that you don't run out of money. Because if your money is allocated the way that it that it was while you were growing your money, and we have another 2008 or financial crisis or 2002, well, guess what? You could run out of money real fast. But Daniel, that point about the taxation is huge. And that's why we have today's book called Smart Retirement. Strategic movement around retirement taxation is what SMART stands for. And so it's a way of being able to pay, um, you know, to, to lower your income tax and pay lesser tax on your monies. And it's a great thing to be taken in consideration. Daniel, when you said, you know, thinking ahead, the further ahead you think, the more sense this makes. If you wait to the last minute, well, now we got more problem. We can still do it, but it's not as good as if we do it ahead of time. Like a lot of things, right? Being proactive is so much better than being reactive. And so that's why we're educating you here on financial strategies with Andrew Daniel Edge, because people don't know what people don't know. 
And we want to give you this book so that you know stuff that you don't already know. Easy read book. Ask for it by name, Smart Retirement, when you call 800-725-7616. 800-725-7616 to the next five callers. Call now. This is Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami. It's not about what you make that counts as much as what you get to keep that counts. So tax planning is very important. We do tax planning for people. And when we're talking about required minimum distributions, it's important to be able to understand how those are going to affect your taxes. So in doing tax planning for people, I see where people come in and I recognize that when you know, maybe they don't have a very much money and their required minimum distribution. So, you know, let me give it this way. So Susan comes in and, and you know, she has has a required minimum distribution of $5,000 and she has to take 5000 out. When we do the tax planning on that, what we find is that maybe not to these exact numbers, but this bring will bring the concept of, uh, about she takes out $5,000 required minimum distribution, but she pays tax on $10,000. Ouch. So it's almost like being, if she's in the 12% bracket, it's almost being like in the 24% bracket because she's paying double the tax. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today, we're talking about how to plan for required minimum distributions, or RMDs, and AAA... That actually is a more common thing Mm -hmm. than people may realize. And this, I don't think we have time to go deep, deep, deep into it, but people need to be aware of at least this concept because it's a big deal and we've seen it happen to a lot of people. Right, right. And and what happened, people say, well, how could that be? Well, how that could be is depending on what your tax bracket is, there's kind of like three tax brackets. One tax bracket, you, you know, you're not going to pay any extra taxes because you, you don't you don't have a lot of money, don't make a lot of money. So that's not an issue. Then you have this high tax bracket where people are paying tax on everything. But you got these people in the middle that are not paying taxes on their social security or maybe any of it or part of it or whatever. And so that's the problem because depending on what your income is, if you have $5,000 in Susan's case, she had $5,000 come in that she didn't have before. So it made her social security taxable. And in my example, again, the, the numbers are not exact, but it made $5,000 of her social security taxable, which wasn't previously. So she's paying tax on 5,000 of social security, even though she's only receiving 5,000 extra dollars, she's paying 5,000 on social security and 5,000 on the extra dollars, which is paying t- tax on $10,000 more. This is problematic to people when they're thinking about and looking at their tax planning because it can it it can throw you in tax brackets that you're not aware of and you're paying more taxes. Who wants to pay more taxes? I don't. You know, you know, it's un American to pay more tax than what you legally have to. And it's a big surprise. I I have seen people come in and they're like looking at tax returns. They're like, what happened here? Why did, why did last year was this, I only took this little bit difference and now my tax went up this much. And it, and it's because it does really weird stuff right around that right. tax bracket you're talking about. So those so are scary. very important things to, very important things to watch out for when you are planning. And, and folks, you got to plan for retired or required minimum distributions. Right. You have to play. Don't just think, well, I think I'm getting close to 70. So I better start thinking about these, right? It's 73 now, but you should start thinking about and planning towards this. How long in advance would you say? 10 years? Uh, at, yeah, five to 10 years in, in advance. It's, it, it will give you good rent. I mean, I've helped people plan for required minimum distributions when they were in their late 50s. And, yeah. you know, that, that, puts them in a in a great place for later on to have tax free money and it's just you know, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Yeah. If you have the conversation and you decide we don't need to make we don't need to do anything. Right. That's fine. But it's just it's starting that conversation, looking at your retirement assets, looking at your your taxable money, what your income's gonna be in retirement, and then saying, you know what? I don't want an RMD because we have clients that don't have RMDs anymore. It's not because they don't have any retirement money. 
It's right. because they've been able to convert all of that over right. time and doesn't hurt them tax wise and get it into Roth accounts and other types of accounts. And the, the coolest thing about that is when you're generating income, when you're creating this retirement income stream and it comes out tax free, you get a hundred percent of that money in your pocket. It doesn't mess up your social security. It doesn't mess up any other types of benefits you may be receiving. And you take $60,000 out, $60,000 goes into your pocket. It You don't have to say, well, what about holding for this and holding for that and holding and holding and holding? Yeah, exactly. That that When is $1,000 not $1,000 when you have to pay tax on it? When yeah. somebody else has their hand in your pocket. <laughs> right. exactly. The government has their hand in your pocket. Exactly. <laughs> You're right. But if, if, you know, when's a thousand dollars, a true thousand dollars, well, when you're able to take it out on tax free, and that's what we like it tax free, it's for me, right? So, you know, if you're just joined us, you're listening to financial strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjmi, because people don't know what people don't know. And we want to educate people so that, because we believe a, a educated retiree is a happy and stress free retiree. How to give and receive charitable contributions is the paper that we have today to get to give to you. We're going to talk about it in a few minutes. But it's, a, again, three-page report that will help you be able to understand how to cut down on your taxes, especially if you're charitable-minded. But you can have this for free by calling us at 800-725-7616. Easy read and be able to give you some insight that you may not have at this point. 800-725-7616. Daniel, you know, when we're talking about taxes, you know, what has happened when the tax brackets and, and tax laws changed in 2018 is that a lot of people gave up, you know, you know, a lot of people go to church or give to charitable organizations one way or another. A lot of people gave up that tax deduction. They don't realize it because, you know, how taxes work is that you have one or two ways. You can itemize your deductions or you can take standard the standard deduction. And the standard deduction increased in 2018. So therefore, a lot of people who were giving money to churches or charities and thus itemizing it, taking it off their taxes, no longer can do it because the standard deduction is so high that is of no benefit. But when you turn 70 and a half, even though they cha they changed the age to 73 for RMDs, when you turn 70 and a half, you can now start what's called charitable Char well, let's try that again. Qualified Charitable Distributions, QCD for short, Qualified Charitable Distributions, and which means that if you're giving money out of your IRA straight to the organization, that money is not taxable. So it's like that. It's almost like itemizing. You get the tax return back. Okay. So if you have a hundred thousand dollars and you're giving five thousand dollars to a charitable organization you're being taxed on the $100,000 the way that you're doing it currently if you take it if you give 100 if you give $5,000 out of your IRA you're taxed you're being then taxed on $95,000 instead of that $100,000 and that counts toward your required minimum distribution so if your required minimum if you don't need your required required minimum distribution and you start getting it, and let's just say it's it's you know twenty thousand dollars, and you have hundred thousand dollars of taxable income. Well, if you gave that twenty thousand dollars to charitable organizations straight out of your IRA, well, guess what happens to your you you that you took care of your RMD, but your tax bracket stays the same because you're still at a hundred thousand dollars of taxable income. But because whatever goes directly to those Charitable organizations after your 70 and a half is not counted on your tax return. And that's what that paper that we're giving away has to do with. It's a great thing that, that uh, we have a lot of clients taking advantage of. So all being equal, let's say somebody's getting a standard deduction of $24,000 and they give $40,000 to, the, to their, their church or a cause that they care about. They could, mm -hmm. they could take they could do itemized deductions mm -hmm. right and write off that forty thousand mm dollars -hmm. so again it's forty thousand dollar tax break mm -hmm. 
And you're saying if you did a charitable account, this chair. <laughs> Qualified charitable QCD. distribution. <laughs> you could still take that twenty four thousand dollar standard deduction, yes, yes. and give forty thousand dollars yeah. to the charity. So you're getting basically sixty four thousand dollars of of deduction okay. or of exactly. not paying tax on sixty four thousand dollars. Exactly. Wow, that is exactly. a cool thing. It is. Why would you not? <laughs> well, right, well, you know why you wouldn't? Because people don't know. And they don't know what they don't know. So that's why we're telling, right, Daniel? And All right. you know, the other reason why the other reason why people don't is because they just don't care. Or, you know, they're busy, right? And, you know, they they don't have tax people, they don't have investment people that are that are keep cognizant of that, keeping a, 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 them aware of that, saying, hey, this is something you need to do. Let us set this up for you. So you can do that. You know, what, for our clients, that's just one thing that we do for our clients. We don't get paid anything extra to do that, but we're adding value to our clients, which is it's key to that standpoint. We're not just investing their money and make sure they have the income, but we're looking at taxes. We're, we're doing the holistic approach, make sure that they also have their estate plans together too. So that is key to have somebody that's going to be able to help you to do that. Now, I'm not, you know, you know, I'm just saying if you're in our listening audience, you know, you know, you, there are people that can help you to accomplish more than what you're probably accomplishing now. I see it over and over again. People are not getting anywhere near the value from their investment people and from their financial people as what they could be, should be, in my opinion. But, you know, be aware of that. Ask the questions so you can take advantage of what's available to you. You hey, in worst case scenario, you can go advise your advisor on how to do these <laughs> things, right? <laughs> there you go, Daniel. Advise <laughs> your advisor. It's like advising your doctor. To, hey, uh -huh. doc, don't forget to take my blood pressure. Don't forget I need that medication, doc. <laughs> right? That's just what you want to do, right? <laughs> well, listen, we have this book that we'd love to put in your hand, Smart Retirement, Strategic Movement Around Retirement Taxation. And when it comes to retirement you know, there's taxes that are going to be due, but if you do some thinking ahead, some planning, some proactive approach, you're going to be able to put yourself in a better situation so you pay less taxes and the government gets less and you get more. So if you like this, we'd love to put this in your hand. Easy read book, only about 100 pages, Smart Retirement by Matt Segula. Call 800-725-7616, 800-725-7616 for your free copy. The next five callers. You listen to Financial Strategies with Andrew Daniel Ajami. Today's topic is how to plan for your for RMDs. Call now, 800-725-7616. You're locked on to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Ajami. You know, Daniel, at the top of the show, we talked about how there's a 25% penalty, but even more dramatic and common consequence than that is one that that puts people's retirement at risk. And what that is, I've seen this happen over and over and over again. It's very common, unfortunately, that people, what happens is when people need to go into the distribution mode, when they're going into RMD age or planning for RMD or retirement, they don't. They keep it in growth mode. And that is the biggest thing that can cause people to run out of money in retirement. It's bigger and more dramatic than the 25% penalty the IRS may fix for not taking your RMD properly. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today, we're talking about how to plan for required minimum distributions. And AAA, that, that could cost people their retirement. We've yeah. seen that yeah. cost people yeah. their retirement. Not when everything's booming, 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 although no. we've seen people eat up their assets even when things are booming, booming, booming because of fees and not and not having the proper investments and advice and things like that. But right. markets don't only go up. And you know what? You said that you said that people didn't really invest too much. There was people, but they didn't invest too much before we went from pensions to um, 401ks. 401ks. But that's not true. 
in the Great Depression in the tw- in the late oh. 20s. Yeah. Right. People right. were, it's just like now, it's just like now with right. all the mean stocks and the everyone's right. an investor and you get, right. you get information from the shoe shine boys on what stocks to buy. It's crazy. Everything repeats itself. There's nothing new under the sun. It's so right. crazy. So yeah. it could be, it could be that people, it could be that people are more interested because they have this money they can manage where people were just, it wasn't qualified money back in the early 1920s right it was just right. savings right. and things like that but it is right. crazy how things just repeat themselves and right. when times are good yeah everyone becomes an investor and right. it's it's so funny the things that i hear is like all you have to do is buy the best stocks all you have to do and this has been a mantra over and over it was in the great depression or 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 prior to right the early 1920s it was the nifty 50 in like the 50s, 60s, uh-huh. and and then you go into these laws where no one wants to be an investor, yeah, and then it starts over again. And same thing in like the late 1990s into the early 2020s, right? Yeah. It went from yeah. everyone wanting to be an investor to no one wanted to touch a stock. It was yeah. a short period there, right? Sure, <laughs> but it still was, right? Right. Well, and, and you know that's a very good point because in the depression, a lot of people got hurt. And, and, you know, you couldn't drag some of those people that went through the depression back into the market with a team of wild horses, right? But then their kids, the baby boomers, they said, Hey, the market is, you know, all it, we're all about the market, right? So, but it's, it is that, you know, history repeats itself. And, you know, if you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat it. And ideally you get the education you need so that, you know, you don't have to, you can learn from other people's mistakes instead of recreating those same mistakes. And that's what we're talking about is that the mistake that people make over and over again is not changing from a, an, a growth mindset, a, a, a accumulation mindset to a distribution mindset at the proper time. And it's, and you just don't go from one to the other necessarily. There's a transition stage in between there. But people don't think about the distribution stage. They think about the accumulation. They've been doing it for 30, 40 years. When it comes time for uh, RMDs, they keep their money in accumulation uh, positions, and that's the problem. They don't allocate their monies properly. And 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 it's kind of like we're getting closer and closer to football season right here, right? And it's kind of like football. If you're up, in the football game, right? You're, the quarterback is not throwing deep passes that can get intercepted and running for a touchdown, right? They're get they're they're running the ball, they're doing short things, they're just they're moving the ball, and then they put their defense out and they want them to stop the other team, right? They just right. they hold on and they're conservative. And this is what most people in retirement or close to retirement have already done. They've built their wealth. And it's not time. When you're <laughs> two scores up, right? And you're in the yeah. fourth quarter, it's right. not time to throw the pass 60 yards down the field, right? It's time to give it to your running back, let him hit the thing, pick up, pick up a few yards, pick up a few yards, pick up, keep your, keep the money you've already built up, right? Right. That doesn't mean you can't get yards. Just like in the game. That doesn't mean if you see a good 20 yard pass, you don't take that, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody wide open, but you're not just trying to rip the ball down the field anymore because you have something to lose. Whereas when you're 25 years old, what's the matter, right? Or uh, when you're in the first five minutes of the game, what's the matter, right? Right. It's completely different. Right, right, exactly. And and you, you have to look at your money and allocate your money in the proper fashion, depending what, what time frame you are in life and where you are in life and, and retirement. Well, you're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami. We're glad you join us. We, we've got a paper we'd love to put in your hand, how to give and receive charitable contributions, a way to be able to help you save money on taxes and, and put, keep money in your pocket when you turn 70 and a half and beyond if you give into charities. Well, you have this paper for free by calling us at 800-725-7616. 800-725-7616. You're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew Daniel Adjami because people don't know what people don't know. And we want to educate people because we believe an educated retiree is a happy 
and stress-free retirement. Today's topic, how to plan for RMDs or required minimum distributions. Daniel, how is somebody supposed to allocate their monies properly? I mean, you know, most Right. I mean, they get have money in 401ks and then they maybe they roll it over. Maybe they leave it there and it's in mutual funds and 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 whatnot. And I mean, isn't that going to work for people? Come on. It's worked for me for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, it it has. When we're talking about these required minimum distributions, it, it puts stuff in reverse. Right. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's like the toothpaste that comes out of the the toothpaste tube really good, but you can't put it back in. And so that's kind of how it is with taking money, right? We talk about having that dream, that big retirement, right? You didn't work 40 years. You didn't work 35 years. So you can just get by so that you can sit home and watch TV. Maybe some people (laughs) did, but the people we work with, they don't want to sit home and watch TV. They want to learn new hobbies. They want to travel at this day and age. It's difficult to spend real time with your family, right? Everybody's busy. People may be far apart. So what do a lot of people do? They take their families on trips so that they can spend time with them. You want to be able to do these kinds of things, have that big, beautiful retirement, and you want to be able to do it by living off income, right? So right. letting your assets pay you, that, that's the best way that I like to describe it is letting your assets pay you. You worked your entire life and you took money out of your spendable money and you yeah. put it into savings. Why did you do that? So that at some point in time, your money could work for you and now your money could pay you. You don't want to spend your money. That's not the goal to spend your money. Right. If you have to spend some money and you're in your 80, 90, no big deal. But if you're 65, 70, you do not want to be spending your money, but you want to be enjoying your lifestyle. You want to be living. I'm not saying you don't want to spend money. You don't want to spend your money. Right. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, what what, what do you mean my money? Isn't it all my money? So that's that's what you've been talking about, switching from that accumulation stage or that growthy stage of life yeah. where you're trying to build your assets to protecting and letting your assets pay you. So we believe in an educational process where people sit down and they go through the risks and returns of what we call the universe of income generating alternatives. Yeah. These are things that pay you. And there's a whole wide spectrum from dividend stocks all the way down to things like government bonds, the most boring, safest thing that you can buy, right? But things that pay you, and it's a whole spectrum. There's a lot of really cool stuff kind of in the middle that people can do. And it's built upon their risk tolerance and their income needs, right? It's not a computer generated Monte Carlo's thing that says, if everything works properly, you'll do this. It's nothing <laughs> like the this. stars align. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's an emotional and needs based approach, right? Your goals. Do you want a big lump sum? Yeah. Do you want to be able to spend a certain amount every single year? Do you want something else? Right. Yeah. And so that's that there are these things they're kind of forgotten about because we live in this easy world, mutual fund, ETFs, just push a button and they're kind of forgotten about. But these are things that pay you. They pay you and they can cover your requirement distributions. You can build a portfolio where it can cover your requirement distribution and you can have extra, extra to reinvest and grow the portfolio extra to help your kid through college, maybe your grandkids start a business, right? Take your family on vacation. It can it can give you extra over your RMDs and make sure that you're not spending down your savings when you're taking your RMDs. No, boy, that you you got it, man. You know, it's your money, so you need to take responsibility for it. And you can have your money sitting on the beach sipping pina coladas, Mm -hmm. or you can be on the beach sipping pina coladas and your money in the sweatshop working hard for you, creating interest, creating dividends so that you don't, you can live off the interest as opposed to living off the principal. 
so to speak. And so, you know, we'd love to be able to tell you more. If you have any questions, let us know. Give us a call, 800-725-7616. We'll answer them on the air. And in the meantime, we have this book as we uh, sign off for today, Smart Retirement by Matt Scula, be able to help you be able to save and put more money in your pocket and be able to use more for you and your family, your loved ones, for what you want. What do you want to do in your retirement? How do you want to use your money? It's up to you. It's your responsibility, you know, and and it's it's up to you to do that. So you can have that for free by calling us at 800-725-7616 to the next five callers. And we are believe that an educated retiree is a happy and stress-free retiree. Enjoy. 